Hi, it's iPhone 3 here, and after doing the gearbox on the Picasso, I was getting it checked out for its MOT. Um, I noticed some surface rust. What I thought it was to be surface rust. After a bit of a grind down just to check the damage, I noticed it was uh, quite apparent that it was just a little bit more than surface rust. The actual seal had started rotting through. So next was just to cut away an area that appeared to be damaged. And as you can see on the underneath, it was like the galvanization of the metal or the coating that they applied had started to peel off from the underneath. A bit more further inspection and I need to cut a little bit more out. So, been a little while since you used the angle grinder. My cuts are a little bit wonky, so I'm just slightly squaring them off now. Digging out any excess rust that was there. Just drying it out now, because all the inside underneath was quite wet and moist. Now this little thing is a dog dryer. Um, you can set the heating on it. And this is it kind of dried out a little bit. It's a little bit better than what it was. The idea here is to protect the inner seal. So you've got to make sure that it's completely cleared out on the inside, that there's no surface rust around that area because we're going to cover it with to block out any more oxygen to enable the any of the steel to then carry on oxidizing. And this should at least give hopefully another five years protection. Here we're just um, protecting the inside from where we're going to be spraying because obviously we're going to be welding a plate in there and we don't want um, to be sort of adding any extra fumes uh, to the weld. We only really want the CO2 argon mix that's in there. So um, we're going to be spraying this. This was the underbody spray, Hammerite I believe it is, and it says it's got the wax oil applied to it. So I gave us a good two, three coats in there, left it overnight to dry after sealing it up. So I just placed a little polythene bag over here. The following day I just applied a little bit more heat just to make sure it was dry and any other moisture that may have got in there was evaporated. So I'm marking out my panel, the size, don't forget to put your top front and top left on. Just cutting it out here, giving it a little bit extra in the height because obviously that's where it's going to be curving around. So it's going to take up a little bit more height if you're not careful. Getting the profile of the sill. Now, this is a bit of scrap metal I was practicing welding on before. First time MIGGIN. Couldn't work it out. Tried all different settings why it wasn't working out properly. What it was, was the CO2 wasn't working. Once I work, worked out that wasn't working, I just had to depress the trigger a little bit further to get the CO2. I managed to get a good, good beads. But in the process of doing this, it kind of bent the metal, which I've used that to aid my sort of profiling. And here I'm just going to be profiling it um, a little bit more, bending it over just very gently, doing that and then lowering it a little bit more and then bending it a little bit more and checking it on the profiler. And I'm just cutting out the last bit. So I want kind of like about the same gap, what? 
the MIG wire is. The, the plate I was using is 1.2 mil. Um, the actual seal, I believe, was like, was like 0.8. So clearing off the back of the plate now, give it a good old wipe over. And then we're gonna cover this. Obviously we're taping it up here and leaving about a quarter of an inch gap as well. So we're not burning off any plate into the weld, causing porosity or anything like that. This is the etch primer used from eBay, quite like it. It is high coverage as well. Um, yeah, I thought, um, this, I've been using this quite a bit actually. It's a halogen heater. So just prepping up the uh, seal now making sure that's nice and clean. I think this, this is the thing with the welds, making sure that everything's nice and clean. Finding myself a ground point. Quick clean up around the area and I'm gonna check the resistance of the ground just to make sure that that is a good ground. And there we go, it's good ground. I've also put a tarp above. One last little blast with the hoover, make sure there's any moisture out that's out of there. Now this bit is a bit of a pain in the ass until I managed to suss it out. It um, kept pinging on me and also every time it kept pinging on me it picked up some of the underbody seal from the underneath. Really pain in the ass doing this bit but managed, I think I managed to do it just pinned on one side maybe and then done the top. I can't remember how I'd done it in the end but it's right pain. So here we go, this is the CO2 obviously you can see where it's not blue. Um, a nice neon blue is where the CO2 is not being expelled. So eventually I'm going to be doing a MIG modification and upgrades and obviously it's going to need a new trigger system. Might put a Eurotorch style thing on there. So the idea here is just going around, leaving a good couple of inches on the tacks, then going back, re-tacking over in, in the gaps and then filling those gaps. Obviously, you can't run one big, long, continuous bead. There's plenty of videos on this um, that shows you the reasons why you can't do it. it. It heats up the metal, distorts it, and twists it. I managed to get a few beads that are a bit inch, like an inch long or so at times, but. I'm to get a few nice welds here and here and here. Beads and then I started getting a bit carried away trying to do a few more beads and it was just blowing through in other places. So I'm doing another grind down. So do a bit grind down, do a bit grind down. It blow through a couple of holes here and there. That's where the metal wasn't the greatest underneath. When it's not windy and the metal's good, it does behave itself quite nicely. So I started taking the welds quite back and as you can see, I need to get some more full penetration down there, really. Um, a bit more here and here and here, a few holes and weak points. And you keep going back, I mean I could call it a day now and patch all over that but that's not a Now, we've got all this fucking hole. I'm going to cut out another section here, tally that on. So, this is my second piece I've just put on. So, now I'm grinding it all away. Uh, this, I've started running into camera issues around about now with the memory card kept cutting out on me. Um, there's a few other places a bit further on it's happened as well and also I had to use the camera whilst doing a U30 review. So there's just a few other little pinholes that are filled and then grinded. And then we're on to the second part of the video.